Many people will never understand clearly who General Idi Amin was and how he led his people. He was a man of controversy who ruled Uganda with an iron fist. Here is the story of this man, mostly hated for his brutal regime, but also ironically loved by many. General Idi Amin Dada, a figure notorious for his brutal dictatorship, rose to power in Uganda after a military coup in 1971 that overthrew President Milton Obote. Characterized by a reign of terror and gross human rights abuses, Amin's rule was marked by widespread repression, extrajudicial killings, and ethnic persecution of people living in Uganda. I have only come here for five minutes. I have come as a president of the Republic of Uganda, and also I am speaking as a great man who is the conqueror of the British Empire. <laughs> I wanted to confirm to you I have, I have liberated my country economically and uh, I am economically strong. And that is why I said I uprooted the British imperialism from Uganda and the Uganda is now pure Africa. We, Africa, we have been weak because we allow ourselves, our brothers, to go and uh, invite some country. But if the whole country in the continent of Africa can show an excellent example, like uh, our beloved leader, His Majesty the King Hassan of Morocco, assisting, assisting, assisting President Mobutu, when he is uh, uh, invaded, this is uh, some point which Africa can prevent to bring in the, uh, the, 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 the other troops from outside. But uh, some other country have been forced to get uh, European forces into Africa because they tried to ask some African country they don't want. Some African country were the one who are confusing ourselves because we train gorillas against our country. We, all, we, we forced government to be in that. We wanted that particular liberation uh, leader to be the president of that particular country. And that have complicated everything in Africa. General Idi Amin declared himself as conqueror of the British Empire in July 1978. His erratic behaviour, such as declaring himself the last king of Scotland, and his idiosyncratic decrees, including the expulsion of the entire Asian community in 1972, contributed to an atmosphere of fear and uncertainty. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you ask me about Hitler? The Hitler's problem is now past tense. Now we are looking forward for the future generations and the future plan. We are no longer going back to Hitler's. You see, the war of Hitler, it was a different... Armin's eight-year rule came to an end in 1979, when Tanzanian forces and Ugandan fighters residing in exile ousted him out of power. The Tanzanian president Mwalimu Julius Nyerere ordered his troops to invade Uganda, Tanzanian army, and rebel forces successfully captured Kampala in 1979 and ousted General Idi Amin from power. Idi Amin subsequently fled into exile in Saudi Arabia, where he lived until his death in 2003. Obey the order and everything, you can punish that person. We are thinking we are the first now country in Africa today who have got many women managers than other countries. We have got how many? Manager women. We have got four managers and we have got another two assistant managers. But I wanted to tell the boxers that the only chance to defeat the referee who are against you or against the country is to win by knockout this is the only thing as a doctor you must be very clean very smart behave very well like a person and also 
you are not too drunk you are the one who should advise the public you should advise general Amin not to drink this is very important because also to drink and over drunk it is not very good you will not even enjoy more <laughs> because you will you will not even have sense but if you drink very little, you feel very happy, very proud, and you talk to your people, that will be... I'm just advising you. <laughs> Armin's fascination with Scotland led him to declare himself the uncrowned King of Scotland. This unusual title added to his eccentric persona. He was known for his lavish lifestyle, owning multiple palaces and luxury cars, Indulging in extravagant expenses, while the majority of Ugondons struggled to make ends meet, Armin often boasted about his prowess as a professional boxer, claiming to have been a heavyweight champion and even participating in Olympic boxing. However, there is little evidence to support these claims, and they are widely regarded as exaggerated or fabricated throughout his rule. I won. <laughs> Armin faced widespread condemnation from the international community for his human rights abuses and disregard for democratic principles. Armin's erratic and unpredictable behaviour added to the atmosphere of fear and uncertainty in Uganda. He would often make impulsive decisions, including arbitrarily appointing and dismissing government officials further destabilizing the country, General Idi Amin of Uganda visited the castles and palaces of Edinburgh, Scotland, on July 1972. The history, sights and impressions during his United Kingdom visits left him influenced to an extent of later declaring himself as King of Scotland, General Idi Amin, the former ruler of Uganda, had a fascination with Scotland and declared himself the uncrowned King of Scotland, he adopted. This unusual title in 1976 and used it to add to his eccentric persona, General Armin played Scottish music for visiting dignitaries, offered to liberate Scotland from British rule, and even wore a kilt to a Saudi royal funeral. However, his claim as the uncrowned King of Scotland was not officially recognised and he remained an uncrowned king. General Idi Amin was known for his lavish lifestyle, owning multiple palaces and luxury cars, and indulging in extravagant expenses while the majority of Ugandans struggled to make ends meet. His extravagant lifestyle stood in stark contrast to the economic struggles faced by the people of Uganda during his rule. The most important of the Afro-Arab so, uh, cooperation, it is very important because Arabs are not well known in Africa. They are investing more of their money in a billion in Europe, which make the industry in Europe to be very progressive. And also we are buying all the raw uh, the material which we sell to them from here. They are sell again to us, but I'm sure when the Arabs invest in Uganda, we shall be in position not only to sell to the people in the world only agricultural production alone, but including industrial material because we have got the raw material in Africa. I think this uh, we can even have more industry in Africa so that you will find that within a few years to come, we will be stronger economically in Africa even to help the other people in the world. General Idi Amin often boasted about his prowess as a professional boxer, claiming to have been a heavyweight champion and even participating in Olympic boxing. However, there is little evidence to support these claims, and they are widely regarded as exaggerated or fabricated. Throughout his rule, General Idi Amin faced widespread condemnation from the international community 
for his human rights abuses and disregard for democratic principles. He was responsible for the murder of many Ugandans and was known for his brutal and unpredictable behavior. General Amin's erratic and impulsive decisions, such as arbitrarily appointing and dismissing government officials, further destabilized the country. General Idi Amin Dada faced widespread condemnation for his human rights abuses and disregard for democratic principles, further contributing to the atmosphere of fear and uncertainty in Uganda. Amin's legacy remains that of a capricious and violent ruler whose unpredictable policies and oppressive regime left a lasting scar on Uganda. In August 1972, the president of Uganda, Idi Amin, ordered the expulsion of his country's Indian minority giving them 90 days to leave the country. He indicated that it was the responsibility of the British who brought them to Uganda. General Idi Amin adopted a special title for himself. He was addressed as His Excellency, President for Life. Field Marshal al Haji Dr. Idi Amin Dada, VC, DSO, MC, CBE, Lord of all the beasts of the earth and fishes of the seas, and conqueror of the British Empire in Africa in general, and Uganda in particular. Gen Idi Amin was the dictator who ruled the people of Uganda. From 1971 to 1979, he is considered one of the most brutal despots in modern world history and was nicknamed the Butcher of Uganda. He once said, You have freedom of speech, but freedom after speech. That I cannot guarantee, General Amin was so brutal that people believed that he ate his enemies. Edi Amin's fascination with Scotland is believed to have stemmed from his exposure to Scottish soldiers during his military training. While training as a soldier, Amin developed a fondness for Scotland and its people. He admired the Scots and their struggle for independence from England seeing parallels between their fight and his own desire to liberate Uganda and Africa as a whole. This fascination with Scotland led Armin to declare himself the uncrowned King of Scotland and adopt various Scottish symbols and traditions, such as playing Scottish music for visiting dignitaries and wearing a kilt to a Saudi royal. Funeral dot, it is worth noting that Armin's claims and actions related to Scotland were often seen as eccentric and exaggerated. His adoption of the title, Uncrowned King of Scotland, was not officially recognised, and his love for Scotland was sometimes viewed as fetishistic and conflicted. Armin's fascination with Scotland can only be attributed to his exposure to Scottish soldiers. During his military training and his admiration for the Scots' struggle for independence, Uganda's former president, Idi Amin, was widely known to be obsessed with doing business with Arab countries. Instead of forging an economic alliance with African nations at home, General Amin was mostly excited about Arab investors coming to invest in Africa, hence making Africa and specifically Uganda a key recipient of oil boom investments. Even though the more significant East African community was already operational, General Amin focused his efforts on building strong alliances in faraway places. He argued that Arab investment into his country was critical, transforming it from an agricultural into to an industrial exporter. His reign in Uganda lasted from 1971, when he seized power from President Milton Obote, to 1979, when Tanzanian troops and Ugandan rebels stormed Kampala and ousted him from power after he attempted to invade his neighboring African country Tanzania Amin fled first to Libya and then to Saudi Arabia where he spent the rest of his life in exile General Idi Amin Dada was the president of Uganda between 1971 and 1979 since then he has become a man of mystery and of myth. More than 40 years after his overthrow and his subsequent death, he remains a key point of reference in Ugandan culture and politics.
Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, bye bye.